Good day there, once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, coming to you guys with some more Planet Side 2 content. Today guys, we are returning to the series that promises to bring you some of the stupidest Planet Side 2 gameplay around, the Time to Gear Up series. This here series is where you guys have total control on how things are run by suggesting a loadout for me to use in the comment section down below, with the highest rated loadout by you guys being selected for the next episode. Now these loadouts could be indiscriminate, Terminator-like killing machines that are designed to wipe the floor with the enemies that dare to oppose you, or something that could be compared to being as effective as hot dropping a Care Bear on the battlefield. The creativity is totally up to you. Today we've got a new conglomerate light assault loadout coming to us from Cavo Man called the Dysfunctional Sniper. I saw the loadout name and instantly knew where this was going, so let's get into it. And let's just get what we expect to be on this loadout out of the way right away. We are running a shotgun and you best believe we're running slugs here on this bad boy as well. More specifically, we're going to be running the Mauler S6, which is the quote-unquote tight cone of fire semi-automatic shotgun out of the bunch and is also the standard edition shotgun available to the new conglomerate. Now, as I said before, we are running slugs on this here bad boy alongside a 3.4 times optic and I'm pretty sure you guys will all now be able to see how the quote-unquote sniper vibes make their way into this loadout. It wasn't listed that I could run extended magazines and considering that most snipers don't feature a mag size greater than what the mauler has by default, I decided to not equip the attachment. As far as our secondary weapon is concerned, Cavo stated that it didn't really matter what I equipped because I wasn't allowed to really use it anyways. So I gave myself the emissary with a suite of attachments, but I did everything in my power to avoid using it even when I was in a situation where it could have saved my bacon. We have a rocklet rifle equipped because, well, what the hell else are you going to pick really? I did, however, have an option to pick any ammo type that I wanted, but I decided to stick with the standard ammo type because, well... If I'm going to be a rooftop dwelling light assault with an unhealthy fanboy-like complex towards these infiltrator buddies, I need something to discourage that one banshee mosquito from ruining my day. It's not a lot, but hey, every little bit counts. Skirmisher jump jets are our ability of choice so that we have the ability to go where no sniper has gone before. Now, interestingly, I was given the opportunity to pick whatever suit slot I wanted, but I was recommended to run Grenade Bandolier to synergize with the class's choice of grenades, being quick cadet nation flash grenades not gonna lie this caught me off guard big time but more on that surely because they actually end up working a little nicer than i expected wrapping up the class here we have the med kits in our utility slot because well what kind of sniper carries heavy explosives it's all about that precision god damn it oh and our implants we're also running a simulant and sensor shield which allows us to be a little bit stealthier when it comes to actually getting into those spots where we want to flank there was also an option to take cat like over sensor shield but you get free cat like anyway with your jump jets in my opinion so i decided to opt for the sensor shield instead Alright, so that right there is the dysfunctional sniper, and look, it may look like a half decent build, and we all know that when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, which is what this guy has clearly tried to have done. Except, with this loadout, you're kind of taking a lemon and trying to make a fucking hot chocolate. Doesn't quite end up working as nicely as it really should in practice, despite how fun it can be. Anyway, to run a loadout like this, you're going to set yourself back anywhere between 1410 and 3810 certs, depending on how much you want to invest into each slot, keeping in mind that this does not reflect the cost of implant grinding. In addition, Cavo also provided us with some backstory to the class where he stated, not being able to achieve his lifelong goal of being the best sniper in the NC due to his obsessive need to soar through the skies and ending up at the bottom of the cliffs as an infiltrator, this soldier was forced to be a light assault to feel the clouds between his legs without slamming into the ground, which the sniper's class would force. Never wanting to give up that accuracy-dependent playstyle to quickly eliminate hostiles through high magnification scopes, he picked up a slug shotgun with a higher time scope to resemble a marksman's rifle. Soaring through the skies and creating flanks as his dreams once were, he uses his shotgun to headshot targets unaware of his outmaneuvering through the terrain. Shame that the damage and performance is piss poor at best. <laughs> Use the quick deck flash grenades to blind your targets long enough to hopefully hit your shots to kill them, otherwise you're essentially a dead man. But then again, successfully and rapidly killing hostiles was never this soldier's dream, or at least thank god it isn't since you're 
hardly going to be dropping targets. But hell, it's fun and slightly cancerous. Best of luck, you're going to need it. And I gotta say a big thanks to Cabo for suggesting the loadout, and to everyone who upvoted it to the top spot, because, well, this is secretly a playstyle that I do consider to be a bit of a guilty pleasure once in a while, guys. It's true. A dysfunctional sniper loadout is something that I find myself enjoying more often than not. Now, that in no way, shape, or form means that it's the most effective loadout out there. Far from it. There are so many issues with the concept of using a shotgun like a sniper rifle in this game that you wouldn't be able to count them on one hand. But the occasional case of you two-shotting fools from above creates some of the greatest what-the-fuck moments in this game. There were occasions where I had enemies change their loadouts to come and kill me directly, which tells me that I was being enough of an asshole to at least somewhat be effective on the battlefield. But, as we said, there are issues here. Firstly, the Mauler is a shotgun, which inherits horrendous muzzle velocity. Seriously, if you see a target at range with this thing and they're moving, I wish you the best of luck. You are going to need a goddamn miracle to hit him, or a PhD in physics to predict the lead you are going to need to apply to give your round enough room to hit the target. You're also going to completely nuke your cone of fire accuracy if you even dare move a step and fire this weapon at the same time. Time. The Mauler's Cone of Fire, while moving alongside a slug round you're attempting to fire at range, means that you are quite simply not going to be able to hit the broad side of a barn, even if the barn is in spitting distance. And I'm not talking like llama spitting distance, like human spitting distance, it's not that great. You're gonna really need to master your movement and make sure that you're smartly moving between shots to throw an enemy's aim off, but also make sure that you're standing still just long enough to score that critical shot accurately. I also found myself running very shy on ammo a lot of the time. You need to pump a lot of rounds into targets at times to finish them, especially if they're medkit chugging. And the ammo capacity here does not equate to a lot of kills if you don't consistently land the potential two-shot kill that the weapon is capable of. Now, while the quick detonation flash grenades were a lot more fun than I was expecting them to be on this loadout, I think on revision I would have rather taken the ammunition belt to ensure that when I went onto the battlefield I had enough ammo to last more than a few fights. I had to seek out a lot of engineer ammo packs while filming this, or hell, actually on second thought, you could just replace the sensor shield with ammo printer. That would also work. Sensor shield is great and all, but it only really works in keeping you stealthy until you pull the trigger. Because there isn't really going to be any hiding the big old boom that the shotguns produce in this game. People are going to know where you are instantly as soon as you fire this thing. But, despite all of this... I had a lot of fun here. I must stress 100% it is not the most effective build out there. It is a butt-ton amount of fun, but the amount of times you get outgunned is also ridiculous, and it does require, actually, a decent amount of skill to master. There is no denying, though, that out-sniping the odd quote-unquote functional sniper, or two-tapping a cocky light assault with those lowly carbines was just the highlight of the session here. And despite me not cracking extremely positive KDRs, I had a lot of fun. It's a unique playstyle and it's very rewarding when it goes right. And it can also produce some of the stupidest moments in-game out there. So once again, my thanks goes out to Cavo Man who brought us this loadout today. I had a lot of fun using it and it's been a while since I've been able to trip into this, you know, guilty pleasure of mine of turning my light assault into a shotgun sniper. So I gotta, I gotta hand it to you, dude. It was a lot of fun and I thank you again for sharing this loadout. Guys, that is going to conclude today's episode of the Time to Gear Up series. As per always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode and today's video. If you did, be sure to backhand that like button and if you're new to the channel, consider backhanding the subscribe button to continue to follow the content that we are releasing here. We are doing our first ever YouTube test stream later in the week, so I look forward to seeing you guys all there so we can test out YouTube as a streaming platform and see if it's worth me streaming a little bit more often here on this platform be cool to see. Be sure to get your comments down below, guys, suggesting what loadout you'd like to see me use next. And as always, guys, thank you again for supporting the channel. Once again, guys, it's been a pleasure. Talk to you all in the next one. Peace out, guys. Have a good one.